policies is broken down into pyruvate. Now uh, this kind of we're looking at um, the fate of pyruvate under the anaerobic condition before going to the aerobic. And I said from the previous class that pyruvate under anaerobic conditions uh, gives fermentation either lactic acid or the alcohol fermentation. So they are bit, um, dependent on what kind of cell it is. We're going to go into that details in this session to understand how does the body use uh, this fermentation or this anaerobic respiration to help us produce more energy. I told you that the main purpose is that we are getting energy from our breakdown of organic compounds. So in the last class we looked at glycolysis, which is the breakdown of the glucose to give two molecules of pyruvate. And we said the first step in glycolysis is the phosphorylation of glucose to give uh, a new six carbon compound having two moles of phosphate. And at that particular point, we lost two ATP. We lost two ATP to our reaction. So this although we borrowed the um, ATP, we are going to pay back later of course. Then it's then split that this two this new six carbon compound is then split to two molecules of glyceraldehyde three phosphates to give us this right. Then after that uh, we now phosphorylate again under um, an oxidation reaction. But at this point we get NADH. And I said NADH is an electron carrier, right? So we used NAD to get NADH. It's very important. We use NAD to get NAD because it's this three um, G3P that's right the three phosphate uh, uh, transferred an electron to NAD because it became oxidized. Then we now add NADH. So that's what so we have to oxidize this particular reaction. Of uh, this particular compound, sorry, to get our NADH, which in it itself is carrying ATP, and I said 3 ATP, I don't look at that later. Then, two more molecules of new um, 3 carbon compound was formed, having two um, phosphate group each. They will now transfer that phosphate group to ATP, ADP, to get our 4 ATP. And don't forget, I said, if you have borrowed 2 ATP from the initial, we have to retrieve or Pay back our uh, ATP. So on that one uh, uh, complete uh, glycolysis, that's bring out glucose, one molecule of glucose. We get it to, uh, we get normally four ATP. But the next ATP we get is two when we pay back our uh, ATP. So we ask what is the net ATP? That was the total ATP. Can say for what is the net ATP produced? Then it is what it is four minus two, which is two ATP. So let's go into what we have for this session, which is fermentation. So, so we said an organic compound, an organic compound undergoes glycolysis. It gives us what? Pyruvate. By right now, if you know this. Normally, pyruvate should continue down into Krebs cycle. Normally. But it's not going to continue under uh, sorry. It's not going to continue under our anaerobic condition. Krebs cycle under anaerobic condition. It cannot continue. Stop. So we're going to stop it here. So what happens under anaerobic condition is that pyruvate is being uh, taken or is being transformed to either lactate or alcohol fermentation so what is this lactate and alcohol fermentation i said lactate it's under um, in an animal cell why alcohol in a plant 
So, so for instance, the lab bit now we are we, we have all these things also um, that that can um, help to undergo this even um, uh, fermentation and aerobic respiration. For instance, our, our, your milk normally if you leave your milk to <coughs> if you just leave it like that without refrigerating it properly, the beer is going to get fermented and get sour. Uh, we call this spoiled milk. It's at that point when when it's not under regulation. But scientists have been able to uh, uh, you. Know, they are able to know that some organisms can actually control the mode of fermentation or the rate of fermentation and that's why we can now process our milk we can now have yogurt, we can have, we can have cheese, we can have uh, those kind of um, drinks that we drink so, and that means they, they pass through what fermentation even your normal ogi in that sense, pass through what fermentation, it controls fermentation you didn't just leave your milk like that, so those, those uh, uh, animal fermentations, yeast organisms, sorry uh, they help to uh, facilitate the fermentation. That's for that. So, but for in, for a human now, how how do we produce this lactate? How does this happen? Where I said when you are running, or when there is oxygen depletion in your body, lactate is being formed. In your body switches directly, automatically, right, that's to acid fermentation. So that's when lactate is now being formed, or lactic acid is now accumulating in your muscle. So when you are running like that and there's no there's no longer oxygen, you can, we cannot we break, we have gotten through glycolysis, we enter the pyruvate, then what happens? Oxygen is no more present, it cannot break down pyruvate to give us much more energy. Then the pyruvate now begins to accumulate as lactic acid in our in our cell. And where is that high concentration of lactic acid or acid in our in our muscle that makes you know that makes that creates pain. You say, yeah, I have muscle cramp, I have muscle pull, or things like that. If you have ever had that, you understand what I'm saying. It's because at that particular moment, there was no, uh, uh, there was a depletion of oxygen. Then <coughs> your pyruvate was, is does been um, uh, your um, lactate and lactic acid was being accumulated in your muscle, and you had that kind of pain. But for the alcohol, for instance, now it's also the same thing. I'm going to look at the step. What happened? The lactic acid fermentation, for instance. What happened is that. Okay, let's go into alcohol. Before we come into lactic acid back. In the, in the alcohol fermentation, it occurs in plants. And you can use to make a normal alcohol, you know, the normal alcohol that you see them sell. I hope you are not drinking one. <laughs> the normal alcohol you see them sell, it's um, under this um, uh, fermentation, it's under an aerobic condition that they use to produce it. Your, your normal table one. So what happens is that at this point here, there is no more ATP. No year from glycolysis to pyruvate, what happened? We release two ATP. But here, at this point, now I want you to follow along now. At this point, there is no ATP released. So if we say there is no ATP, then how come the big call it respiration? Producing energy is that when pyruvate is going to lactate, uh, for instance, when pyruvate is going to lactate, that NADH I think that very important that we used that we used in oxidation of glyceride the I three phosphate does flow along even if you does still does flow along the pyruvate the NADH we used NAD we used to uh, in, if you remember that reaction where we had uh, this we had this. We have two molecules of this. You remember? Then we now got something like this. <coughs> if you remember this reaction very well, and I said NAD to give NADH, right? Before we get our normal pyruvate, is that this NAD is being replenished back in the cell. So, the NADH now transfer or, or uh, 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 NADH now transfer back this hydrogen. Don't forget it has received hydrogen. It transfer the hydrogen back to our pyruvate. So it is transferring. So from NADH in this reaction, what is happening? From NADH, it is transferring back this electron. This H it is transferring back. So we are going to have what NAD plus back. So this NAD plus will now be used in our body again to undergo glycolysis in this stage. 
So you can see that if, if, if let's assume this is not occurring, that will mean that this step, once it happens, it is going to, to get your point to not happen again. Why? Because there will not be any supply of what energy plus again in your body. But we need that. So that's why when in other anaerobic condition, we are not producing ATP per se, but we are replenishing uh, uh, one of the uh, reducing agents that can help us to you know to replenish to reduce or to break down glycolysis and um, glucose to give us ATP. <coughs> so that's what is happening from pyruvate to lactate. So you can see the reaction. We are replenishing back our our energy. We are not producing ATP. Don't forget that important. So for the alcohol, the pyruvate goes to alcohol. I said we use it to make our normal alcohols and for the plants. Then uh, uh, the, that's where we release. So at this point, what, what happened for the alcohol now? It occurs in a two stage, two, two step reaction. This one still remains the same. Pyruvate to lactic acid, just the three carbon, the three carbon. But from pyruvate to alcohol, what happens is that pyruvate, which is a three carbon, uh, first of all loses CO2. It loses CO2. It will be having what two carbon, then it is now being uh, reduced or oxidized. Sorry, to now get out our alcohol. So we add hydrogen to it to get us our normal alcohol. So at this point, we are releasing CO2 gas. When we, we are under fermentation of pyruvate to give alcohol, we are releasing CO2 gas. So your normal alcohol. Uh, your, your normal beverage that we drink, they help to trap. <coughs> they trap this CO2. That's why you can see that it's always popping up. Why? Because the CO2 is still there. They call it carbonated drinks. So that's what happens in, in your anaerobic respiration, even in the fanta we are drinking. But for your bread now, for your dough and things like that, it's the same. Uh, the same mechanism that is happening from pyruvate to alcohol. The CO2 there is being used to uh, make the bread to rise. Well, the question will be that how come I will eat bread and not get drunk is because during your baking, the ethanol will escape, so you can't get drunk when you're eating your bread. Despite the fact that it is pyruvate to alcohol, your ethanol, ethyl ethanol in that sense, is being evaporated or being is escaped or made, made to escape under baking. So that's what happens under the fermentation uh, during the anaerobic condition. Come again. Under the anaerobic condition, an organic compound, glucose, undergoes glycolysis to give pyruvate. Because it is anaerobic, it cannot go into the Krebs cycle. It goes into fermentation, which is the lactic acid fermentation or the alcohol fermentation. Under the lactic acid fermentation, we replenish back our energy, which is used to you know, continue the process of glycolysis. When I forgot to say this, when your muscle cell relax back, the way you when you run, when you now stay, you now to now replenish more oxygen. By the time you are now okay, then your normal glycolysis now starts. The energy produced from that initial moment when you are breathing, breathing, is what is used to continue the glycolysis when you are now fine. So under the alcohol, the first thing that happens is you lose two, you lose a amount of CO two, then. We add hydrogen to get our alcohol. So that what happened in the fermentation, in, uh, lactic acid fermentation, and uh, uh, alcohol fermentation. So that's the fate of pyruvate under an aerobic condition. So in our next class, we're going to look at the fate of pyruvate under aerobic condition, where it's going to go through Krebs cycle to give us much more energy. It's at this stage we're going to see more energy produced. More energy produced at home. We're going to get about 36 ATP at this stage. So that will be, that will be studying in the next class. But get this. In the anaerobic condition, glucose is being converted to lactate and there is no more production. So if you are being asked, what is the net ATP of glycolysis under anaerobic condition? It is what? 2 ATP. Why? Because by the time it gets to pyruvate, we do not produce any more ATP when it's going to lactate or alcohol. It just stop at the ATP under an aerobic condition. It's still very low. So we need to undergo Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain to get more ATP.